Hey guys, I hope you are doing well. Um, I've got a bit of a slightly different video for you today, um, but I thought it would be kind of interesting for you guys to see what I've been up to in the last week. Um, so me and my um, fiancé Duncan, we went on holiday uh, to a place called Bongali Mountain Lodge, um, which uh, borders or shares a fence with Kruger National Park, so down in South Africa. Um, kind of down on the border by um, Mozambique and near Swaziland and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, so this this is a separate reserve that shares a border with uh, the famous Kruger National Park. So um, yeah, we were staying in this beautiful cabin. <laughs> um, Duncan sneezing. I kept that in there for you for comedy value. Um, and we have this amazing view, just beautiful view. Um, so yeah, I thought, you guys, I thought I'd show you guys where we were staying. Um, so, uh, please excuse the mess. This is um, a bed that's like wide enough for three people. It's kind of crazy. It was massive. Uh, this bath was awesome. Um, nice kind of sink area there, a bit of a sofa. Nice sleeping under the thatch roof. I, I love that so much. It just feels so lovely. Um, and then a bathroom, it got an inside shower and an outside shower, so I definitely made use of that. Uh, it was a bit cold on this day, but it warmed up very nicely by the end of the trip, so uh, definitely made use of that. So yeah, we had this nice little balcony, um, and um, this was kind of my setup here. So I got my Faber Castell Pit Artist pens in the, in the grey shades, which I'm really enjoying um, having. Um, my razor there and just an assortment of fine liners um, and a couple of a couple of travel brushes, you know, pencil. I managed to drop that and it almost went through the slats, so I thought <laughs> that didn't happen. Uh, it wouldn't have been the end of the world, I could have got it, but it would have been, you know, anyway. Um, and my Hannah Mueller sketchbook there and then my trusty set of a uh, St. Petersburg White Knights watercolours. So, mm -hmm. there we go. Really need to replace that Indian yellow uh, some stage. It's kind of, you can see that's the colour I use quite a lot. So yeah, um, I sat here for, I don't know, like an hour or so and sketched this view. So this was um, the resulting sketch. I couldn't really film the <laughs> The actual um, sketching itself, I just didn't bring my the equipment necessary. You know, I wanted a bit of a break, but I also I wanted to paint, but I didn't really want to film it. You know, so uh, this was the next best thing, showing you guys the end result. So I was kind of happy with it, but then I thought, you know, it was all in watercolor, and I was like, mm, I wonder what it would look like if I added a bit of pen, uh, a bit of ink to the foreground to the trees. You know, um, just got a bit of bit scribbly with it so um yeah I tried that and I do think it actually uh does help the foreground just pop a bit you know I wasn't I was just being scribbly and loose with it you know I quite liked it um so yeah I didn't I mean maybe it was quicker than an hour actually I did kind of I think it took an hour because I had to wait for all the layers to dry like all the mountains and stuff otherwise obviously they would have seeped into each other so I think that's why it took me so long um because obviously it's not a very detailed sketch. So then I decided that I'd move um, off and go and sketch one of the, the other cabins. There's about 40 cabins here in Bongani Mountain Lodge um, on its own game reserve. It's about 8,000 hectares, and it's got the big five, which is... Uh, um, oh God, I'm going to embarrass myself now. It's the lions, the leopards, the elephants, the rhinos, and buffalo. That's the big five, big five game to view. So here we are driving around with our excellent guides, uh, Elliot and Aaron, and we found a big herd of buffalo, which was cool. So yeah, as I'm saying, they're one, they're one of the big five. Um, yeah, they're really awesome. The males there look like they've got little wigs on. They're funny. So yeah, and then we had a treat. We were tracking these rhino all day. I finally found them right at night time. The baby rhino. Um, so yeah, you know, we were we were just there quickly and we were trying to bother them too much, but um oh, it was awesome to see them and 
you can't see really from this footage, but we were right in amongst them in the truck. You know, they were right around us. There was about five of them, and it was just, it was just beautiful. Um, so yeah, even the tiny little creatures, I was just finding super magical. Um, this guy is a zebra millipede, and he's got these little red legs. I just found him fascinating, so I was like, I had to film him and show you guys. Um, we were standing here having a cup of coffee, I think. Just taking in the view, it's beautiful. So off we go again. It's like nice clouds around the around the mountains there and stuff. Um, so yeah, we did some hectic four by fouring. It was pretty cool. Um, we were our bums were sore by the end of the. We were getting up at half past four in the morning to go on the morning game drive, and then we'd go again at half past four in the afternoon. So trying to avoid the hottest parts of the day, more chance of seeing the animals. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't the most relaxing of holidays in terms of getting up, but, um, yeah, worthwhile, though. Uh, on our last day, we finally found, uh, we were tracking the elephants and we found them. We found a whole bunch of them. This is, I'm just filming one of them here, but um, we also saw a little baby elephant as well, which was super cute. Um, but, yeah, I absolutely adore elephants. I always have since I was a little a little one. So um, any time... Uh, get an opportunity to see elephants I'm I'm just so excited so that was a, a bit of our holiday um so I sketched obviously the hut and the view and all that sort of stuff while I was on holiday but it was pretty impossible to sketch any of the animals for a start we're in a really bumpy 4x4 secondly my eyes are really just not very good um <laughs> so I can't see too much detail uh but I was looking through the binoculars you know so that was cool, but yeah, there was just no, there was like there just wasn't time to sketch. We'd stay by the animals for for a few minutes, you know, and then and watch them for a while, and then kind of move off. So to do any kind of meaningful sketching would be quite tricky. I think I'll try one day, maybe do some gestural stuff, but um, I didn't. I just wanted to, you know, sit back and relax and just kind of enjoy the, you know, watching the animals and stuff. Um, but when I finally move to South Africa permanently, you know, I'll have more and more opportunities, I hope, to visit the bush and see the animals and whatnot. So maybe um, I will do try and do more uh, animal sketching um, on location as well. Um, so, yeah, I, do, I very rarely draw animals. I've probably got a couple of sketches um, in my previous sketchbook from this year of some cows that I saw in South Sudan. If you've seen my travel sketching in South Sudan video, you will see uh, that I did sketch some of the, the Mundari cattle, um, who very distinctive looking um, cattle. Um, but yeah, I did. So, you know, this is kind of out of my comfort zone. So I was just trying to approach it in the same way with, with like a building, you know, sort of um, lightly going in with pencil, looking for the big shapes, uh, trying to mark where certain things are in relation to each other. Um, I found this giraffe's face quite symmetrical. Um, so, you know, I was just trying to make sure I, like, got the eyes level, got the ears level, that kind of thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, I found this picture on, um, just on the internet, and I've I've put it in my board, my sketching reference board on Pinterest. So I'll put the link below. So if you guys want to check that out, then then you can uh, sketch it too. Uh, the picture will be there. Um, one of the funny things about the giraffes is that they have these little birds on their heads and when I looked through the binoculars I just found it so hilarious so I was like I really want to draw a giraffe with a bird on its head I think they're called ox packers I think they help with the um, parasites and stuff so I'm going to use a dip pen for this um, sketch which I just got um, at the art shop during the Black Friday sales this um, even without a discount this set was like 35 rand which I think is like two dollars um, two US dollars so super cheap it was obviously more expensive stuff there but I was speaking to the shop assistant and she said you know um, just try this cheap thing first and see if you get on with it and I was like okay that sounds fair and then she directed me to get this acrylic drawing ink here because um, I wanted waterproof um, ink obviously so I could put um, a watercolour over it so I'm just pouring it into this it's actually just a wine <laughs> uh, a lid from a wine bottle um, which I'm finding very useful for like pouring in uh, white gouache or any other bits that I just need a, like a little container for. It's like really, really useful. Um, and there's so many of them outside because we drink a lot of wine here. Um, so I pour a little bit in there. It's quite a lot actually for what I need, but 
I find actually if it's the cap is fuller, then the pen behaves itself a bit more. Otherwise, it's a bit tricky if the, the, the pot's not full enough. So I kind of place it inside this other jam jar lid thing just in case. I'm so terrified of knocking it over, knocking it onto the carpet, you know. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm so clumsy. I just need to put in the relevant safety measures to make sure I don't knock it on the carpet. Um, so, yeah, and then... This, yeah, I'm super inexperienced with these. I don't know anything about them, but I'm just sort of, you know, I just kind of, I haven't done any research. I probably should do some research. I probably should write a blog post on it and actually get to grips with what I'm talking about here. Um, but it's quite nice just grabbing something, a new art supply and just going for it, you know, not overthinking it and just using it intuitively, you know. Um, so this came with six nibs. I think it's more for like a calligraphy vibe, although it has got comic something written on the side of it. This is totally like um, not a brand I've heard of. I think it's just a really cheap thing from China or something. So, um, but yeah, the woman was like, if you, you know, if you really get into it, then you can buy something more expensive or you actually only, you know, now I've got the plastic kind of holder thing there. You can just buy separate nibs by themselves. So um, yeah, I just wanted to try it out. So, and I thought I'd try it out. Seeing as I'm at home right now, I thought I'd try it out right here. Um, you know, not sure if I would use this on location. I think it would be a bit annoying, but I think I think people do. Some people do use these on location. Um, maybe if I had a bit of a better ink well set up kind of thing, maybe it would be okay. Um, but what's nice about this, I, sh I think you saw me testing it on the paper, is that you can get like really varied line weight with it um you know you just apply more pressure the the nib is quite uh flexible more so than like just a standard fountain pen even a like the gold fountain pen nibs are supposed to be more flexible but this is even more flexible so you can get like a really nice kind of variation of line with it and i think that's why a lot of people like dip pens so yeah i'm just trying to uh go with the flow here and just kind of um, pick out the um, kind of textures and stuff um, trying not to you know trying to yeah draw a more textural line if you know what I mean rather than just like outline it all in solid lines I hope that makes sense like the furry kind of uh, textures rather than just a just a flat line um, so yeah this ink is um, is nice it's it's very black it's waterproof um so yeah i guess it is kind of like an acrylic -y type paint or something maybe um and it kind of dries it looks a bit shiny sometimes when it dries i guess that is because of the acrylic paint nature in it i don't know um i'd be super interested to hear if you guys use dip pens and what ink you use uh with it i guess you can just like you could use india ink and stuff like that again i've done zero research so i don't really know what i'm talking about here but um let me know in the comments if you use dip pens and um what ink you use and tell me more tell me more because I, I i like it it feels like quite old school to use a dip pen i quite like the the feel of it you know it's, yeah so i'm doing the background here just uh wet and wet um so i put down uh some some clear water first and then went went in and kind of let the the paint sort of move around as it wanted to so the obviously important step here is uh, to let the paint dry so i think someone else someone mentioned it on my video before like do you let the paint dry and it's like yes definitely it's just this is in time lapse so obviously you don't have to sit and watch paint dry um <laughs> and uh, neither do i i just let it dry i leave the room i go and do something else for a few minutes or whatever you know um so yeah um Otherwise, you know, if I go and paint the giraffe, it's going to bleed all over the place kind of thing. My hand's going to get in the wet paint. It's ju it'd just be a pain. So you, a bit of patience is required with watercolour, especially if you're doing, like, you know, wet and wet techniques. Sometimes you do just need to let it dry. Same with when I was painting that mountain view. I was doing, like, a layer of mountains, and then I'd step away for a couple of minutes, let that dry. Luckily, it, w it was quite a uh, hot day, so well, the temperature was quite hot, even though it was quite overcast, so it did dry quite quickly. Um, but I've made that mistake with impatience before and then everything bleeds all over the place and it's just a mess. So it is worth just, um, if you can, you know, just being patient and let, letting the watercolour dry. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, just going in and sort of just trying to, trying to figure out my colours, trying to figure out how to get some 
texture going and that kind of thing. I've got a watercolour um, pencil here. So it's a Faber-Castell um, Albrecht Trura. Probably said that wrong. Uh, watercolour pencil. I've only got six of these. Um, I bought them loose separately um, because they didn't have any small sets in the shop, but I really wanted to try them out. So I just got a couple of browns, a couple of greens, a couple of like a blue and a grey or something like that because I figured that those were probably the colours I would use the most. Um, but I'm hoping to get a few more of these so I can actually review them. But I do, they are on first sort of few times of using, they seem like just head and above like other watercolour pencils I've used. So I am looking forward to getting more of these so I can actually do a proper review and, a, you know, I've got a full spectrum of colours. I mean, like 12, you know, because I've done reviews of what colour pencils and they're, they're usually a set of 12 because A, that's mostly what I can afford and B, you get the basic colours. Like, I don't think you really need any more than that. Like, you know, unless you need a very specific bright colour or something, I think you can you can get what you need. I guess it depends on what you're sketching, but yeah. Um, so I am going over that watercolour pencil here with um, water and it kind of actually took some of the pigment away so that the, the yellowish was shining through and I wasn't really liking it, I actually preferred it without uh, adding the water so um, yeah I kind of wish I hadn't done that but that's fine, I mean you know I didn't know that was going to happen so it doesn't matter. Um, so I think later on I did try and go and like go over with the pencil again just to kind of bring it back a bit. Um, but, uh, and also with the pattern, I mean, obviously you can see the photo, I probably should have put those spots like a bit closer to each other, I've left a bit too much of a gap. Um, but you know, I'm not going for like hyper realism here, as you guys know, that's not like what I'm doing, I'm just kind of sketching, you know, and just trying to make a nice picture. Um, and so, you know, that's fine. But I'm just saying, you know, if I did it again, I'd probably try and concentrate on those spot patterns being a bit closer together. That's one obvious thing that stands out to me that that, that could be better. Um, but over, over um, all, I was quite happy with how this uh, sketch was going. Um, I think, I, you know, I've kind of captured a bit of the, the character, the amazing character of a giraffe. And for me, um, the memory of seeing this bird sitting on the giraffe's head, I don't know why it tickled me so much, but I just found it so comical. It just felt like watching a, a creature from an animated uh, film, you know, like a Disney or a Pixar or something, just with it just looking pretty gormless with this bird, like, pecking away on its head. It's just funny. Um, so I was like, I have to draw that. Just, just if anything, just to remind myself of the experience, you know. Um, so I think the birds that sit on their heads are called oxpeckers. Oxpeckers. Um, and yeah, as I said before, they're actually helping the giraffe. They're kind of like clean, like eating the parasites or the bugs from its head or something. Um, so, and I think this is a male giraffe because our guide was saying that um, the males don't have the tufts of hair between those those horn things on its head um, because I think they generally gets ripped out when they fight. Uh, typical bloke, say. Eh? And then um, the females do have the tufts of hair because, you know, they like their hair and they want to keep it all pristine and stuff. So I think that's how you tell the difference between a male and a female giraffe. But maybe I got that wrong. But I think it's right. Um, and they don't have any noises either, giraffes. Not like other animals. They don't have any noises. So, um, but they do, what do they do? I think they sneeze. God, my memory is so bad. Yeah, I think they sneeze, which is quite funny. Um, but then also, randomly, I, I sometimes feel my smartphone listens to me, um, but randomly this uh, article popped up on my kind of feed about giraffes um, and that it's been proven that they hum to each other at night, which I just... Well, I've just got this image in my head, like these giraffes swaying and like kind of humming to each other. I don't know, it's just super cute. <laughs> um, so I like that, that was nice um, so yeah I'm just kind of going in and just sort of tidying up some lines and just trying to get a bit of, bit of a contrast between the face and the neck you know just so that it's not all like blurring into one um, which I sort of added a bit of white gel pen there just a few whiskers you know so I think I needed, needed to do a bit more with that really but um you know, just to make that face pop out a bit more. Um, but otherwise, I'm really happy with this um, sketch, guys. I'm, I think I really um, 
yeah, I was really happy with my efforts on that one. So I don't know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. Um, and I hope that was helpful um, to watch. Um, guys, if you do um, like my illustrations and whatnot, and you would like to know more about the last few years of me sketching around the world, then I have a book. Um, it is an ebook. Um, you can download it. You can buy it. Sorry, from Gumroad. The link is in the description below. Um, it is a sixty-page ebook. It features over one hundred and thirty of my watercolor and ink illustrations that were mostly done on location whilst traveling um, through sort of fifteen different countries on four different continents. It's got. Um, places it's got a whole chapter on Iran, for example, which was just mind blowing. Um, places like Ethiopia and Somalia as well. Um, uh, a few bits from Europe, some from Australia, um, all over the place. So do check it out. I think you will really like it if you're um, if you like my style of sketching. Um, so yeah, link is below. And also, if you get a chance, guys, um, go check out urbansketchingworld.com because I've got a lot of blog posts over there, um, over 60, in fact, um, about everything you can think of uh, to do with, well, not everything you can think of, but a lot of things you can think of to do with urban sketching, um, from beginners' uh, information, art supplies, through to inspiration, things to techniques to experiment with, all kinds of things. So... Do go check it out if you um, are into urban sketching or um, if you want to kind of get some inspiration for your sketching practice. Um, and that's pretty much it from me today, guys. I know it was a bit of a different one, but I hope you enjoyed that little peak of our, our little holiday, pre-Christmas holiday um, into the wilds of South Africa. Um, and I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas. I will be back with another video somewhere between Christmas and New Year's. Um, so I shall wish you a happy 2021 when I do that. But yeah, in the meantime, have a great Christmas and I'll see you in the next video.